Every smartphone on earth, every single one does something it should not be able to do. It knows where you are, not roughly, not somewhere in your city, within meters. And it figures that out by listening to signals from space. Signals so weak they are drowned out by the noise of the universe itself. It does this without a giant antenna, without an atomic clock, without perfect physics. In fact, by the rules of how space, time and information work, this should be impossible. And yet, not only does it work, it works so well we don't even think about it. So today, we are not just asking, how does GPS work? We are asking, how is it even allowed to work at all? Because to make it happen, your phone has to overcome relativity, quantum noise and the speed of light itself. Now you might think, okay, GPS, I get it. Satellites up there, phone listens, calculate distance, shows a blue dot. Simple, right? Except when you actually try to do it, physics fight you every step of the way. Because for your phone to know your location, it has to measure how long it takes a signal to travel from a satellite to your pocket. And that's easy, until you remember, the signal is traveling at a speed of light. Which means, if your timing is wrong, even by a millionth of a second, you will not be off by meters. You will be off by hundreds of meters. And your phone, this tiny thing, doesn't have an atomic clock to measure that time precisely. So without perfect timing, how does your phone measure light speed signals and still find you? Well, it gets even worse. The satellites aren't just sitting there, they are moving at 14,000 km per hour. And they are so high up, time takes faster for them, thanks to relativity. Yeah, Einstein stuff. And here's the crazy part. GPS satellites experience time differently than we do. Two weird things happen up there. Being high above Earth makes their clocks run faster. Like, they are aging 45 extra microseconds each day. But moving at 14,000 km per hour makes their clocks run slower. About 7 microseconds per day. The net result? Their clocks gain 38 microseconds daily. That might sound tiny, but without fixing this, your GPS would be wrong by 10 km every single day. Your map would think you are in the next town over. So to fix it, engineers deliberately set the clocks on satellites wrong. So relativity makes them right in space. With that, what was wrong on Earth becomes perfectly right in space. It's like setting your watch 5 minutes slow, because you know your commute always makes you 5 minutes late. This way, engineers hack time itself to make GPS work. Also, the GPS signals are weaker than a light bulb, just 25 watts from space. By the time they reach your phone, they are around minus 130 dBm. And that's like trying to hear a whisper in a hurricane. So how does it work in cities, in buildings, underground parking lots? Well, sometimes it fails. You probably have seen the blue dots spin around or jump streets. That's multipath error. Signals bouncing off skyscrapers, glass and metal. Your phone hears echoes, like someone shouting in a canyon. Then there's ionospheric delay, because charged particles slow the signal. Tropospheric delay, like weather, moisture, clock drift, Doppler shift and things like that. GPS isn't just tracking, it's fighting through noise, errors and physics itself. And still, somehow, your phone pulls it off. And suddenly you realize GPS is this beautiful, chaotic estimation engine. So how does your phone actually win? Well, first it cheats or fakes it. It listens to multiple satellites and uses math to fake perfect timing. If your clock's wrong but the satellites are right, you can solve for both time and location at once. Your phone uses algebra to impersonate an atomic clock. It measures distances from at least four satellites. And where those distances overlap, that's you. For decades, the US military artificially scrambled civilian GPS, adding 100 meters of error because of the fear of enemies using it. But in 2000, they flipped a switch, partly because companies found workarounds and partly because the world needed it. But GPS alone isn't enough. So your phone cheats harder using other data. It grabs signals from Wi-Fi networks around you, cell tower signals, Bluetooth beacons, it fuses all this data together and uses GPS more like a reality check rather than the only source. This is assisted GPS, a hybrid system that's everywhere, except underground. Sorry, subway riders. Also, your phone is not just listening to American satellites, it's grabbing signals from Russian, European, even Chinese networks, dozens of extra eyes in the sky. 
Now, because GPS signals are so weak, even a $10 jammer can break them or spoof them, tricking your phone into thinking it's somewhere else, which is a huge problem for everything from Uber rides to military systems. That's why modern systems cross-check everything. GPS, Wi-Fi, inertial sensors. Because location isn't just about space, it's about time. Your phone, this cheap tiny device, defies physics. It corrects for relativity, guesses through quantum noise, solves relativistic algebra, while you check your crush's Instagram stories. And we don't even think about it, which honestly might be the most amazing part of all. But here's the wildest part. GPS wasn't even meant for us. In 1983, Korean Airlines Flight 007 strayed into Soviet airspace and was shot down. 269 people died. The US military had GPS, but it was a secret, a tool for missiles and submarines. Yet after that tragedy, Reagan promised to open it to civilians to make sure no plane would ever get lost like that again. Okay guys, now it's your turn. Please let me know about your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll be waiting for your comment. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.